Hey guys, Mitch here with the Audio Dabbler YouTube channel. In this video, I'm going to go through 8 Matrix, the audio routing, and kind of how I've been using it to do some complex um, routing into different effects. And so let's uh, dive in. All right, so this is 8 Matrix, and I have it loaded up. And this is a session. This is not the um, spacecraft one that I did, but I will show you that session as well. But this was um, playing around with it. And let me go ahead and screenshot this and bring it up. Let me grab my pencil. All right, and so inside of here, it's a, gr it's a grid based system. And so the way it works is, let me get my little highlighter on here, is um, the way this set, setup right here works, I have GeoShred right here, and it's sending, actually sending MIDI to SynthMaster 1 as well inside the MIDI settings, which I can show you in a moment. But as far as the way the routing works, each of these little dots right here represent a connection. And you can think about these guys over here as kind of the outputs or the senders, if you will, because these are sending out. And then you can think about these as the kind of the receivers. These are the senders. Those are the receivers. And so let me pull this up and erase some of this. And so as you can see, SynthMaster 1 is sending audio out the headphone jack. And so is GeoShred, and so is EOS 2, right? So let's pull up a different color. SynthMaster 1 is also sending audio to Discord 4, okay? And then this one right here is 1, and that one is 1. They kind of correspond to each other. Like this one is the same as that one, same way with SynthMaster, same way the GeoShred is in the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, ninth slot. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, ninth slot. So that's how, that's the same app, it's just their connection, whether it's going to send or receive. And as you can see, GeoShred is also sending to the first Discord. Now this first Discord is sending to Dubstation. So its audio is going out here and going there. So it's kind of the path is SynthMaster 1 and GeoShred are both sending to the Discord. Let's pull up another color. Okay. <clears throat> and so then the Discord is sending to the second Correction. Dubstation is sending to the second Discord, and then that second Discord is also sending it back to the first Discord. So you're creating a little bit of a feedback loop in this particular one. And in the settings, I'll show you in just a moment, they're pitching up, and so each time the audio passes through it, it pitches up higher, and that kind of gives the gives the the shimmer effect. And then it's also sending everything to EOS 2 and then EOS 2 is sending out to um, the main outputs and you'll see that I have the when you're doing sending and stuff like this you will want to have the mix all the way up on the effects that way you're only getting the affected sound being processed and that you're getting the full clean sound straight out there so it's a it's a mix so you got a kind of a clean you got a clean mix kind of going from this app from SynthMaster 1 and GeoShred going out and that's kind of the default and then the EOS 2 it's reverbing the crap out of it and it's sending out but it's not sending out a any of the natural sound it's only sending out the sound that is being processed and so let's done with that delete that screenshot I have actually created some graphics to kind of show I'm going to post an article on makemusicanywhere.com once I get that article done and so 
Let's pull back up Geo Straight up here. And let's turn off the, and you just, to turn on a node on or off, you just click on it. And so now I'm gonna hit a note. And all you're hearing is the processed portion of it. So, you know, it may not be the most appealing sound in the world, but when you combine it back in with GeoShred and Synthmaster 1, you kind of get that. You know, you kind of get that uh, feel, you know, kind of just kind of starts swelling and it sounds nice and here's another thing here down at the bottom that's how I have the audio the MIDI routed you got this MIDI matrix um, so everything is done in matrices and I think the beauty of this is because you don't have to keep loading or reloading any apps and different channels you just you have them all loaded up and you have three banks worth of these matrixes here and you can send audio back and forth between the different matrixes via the buses A and B um, but you can you know you can easily create effects loops with this you can easily route audio from discord to dub station to whatever and you're like oh well, I don't like that an audio bus, it's really hard to start moving things around, and AUM as well, it's not as easy to just, you can't just drag an app over, I want it on this channel. Whereas here, you don't really necessarily have channels, you have lanes, and you can decide what each lane is listening to and what it's not, and where each lane is sending to and where it's not. And so let's, I called that one awesomeness. So now let's go to the spacecraft. And as you can see here, I have the MIDI. I have my MK Lab, Mini Lab hooked up, and I have it sending the spacecraft. Let me turn this volume up. And what these samples are, these samples, the one, the sample right here is already pretty processed, and it sounds pretty awesome just the way it is. It's Ice Lake and it's from Christian Henson. I'll leave a link to, in the description to his uh, YouTube channel and the piano book. He's doing some fantastic, amazing work on some free uh, EOS instruments and things like that. So I just grabbed this sample, put it in there and I liked how it sounded. And then this right here is just my electric razor. Just zzz, that's all that is. And so that's just kind of adds. And the same thing here is this right here is a lot simpler than what the other one was. But you can see I have spacecraft. It's just easier to do it this way. I have spacecraft here. Let me zoom in. And I have its audio going this way. Turn on the yellow. All right but I also have it sending to both of these discords and then both of the discords are sending to Dubstation but actually Dubstation is not sending to anything so let me get rid of that there we got the so I must have saved. Let me add in, because I'm pretty sure I had EOS 2 on this as well. And so yeah, to add, let me go ahead and just do that to add a node. It's kind of broken up really awesomely. You got all, you got the effects, you got effects that have MIDI instruments, generators, and this straight up MIDI. And so I'm going to go to effect and EOS 2. And then I'm going to hit OK. And then I want dub station to send to EOS2 and then EOS2 to send out and turn the mix. So 
So it's just, I mean, it's just super, super, super fun to be able to do that. And you know, if I wanted to create kind of the, kind of the loop that I had before, or if I want to say that's the beauty of it is I can just play around with it. Oh, well, I don't. I want to. What if I sent sent this dub station? back into it again. That's what will happen. But the beauty of it too is you can send a small amount back. So I just want to send a small amount back. See what happens. So that way it doesn't grow as much. And so to, to control that, you just click on one of these nodes and you can drag in and out. You know, that's, and that's basically how much output you're sending to those particular apps. It's just beautiful. Turn the decay way up. You know, we can listen to what this sounds, just the process sound sounds like. It's just the process sound sounds pretty sweet. And so in my next, the, my next experiment that I want to do with this is taking some found sounds, process them through spacecraft and a heap of audio effects to get this really long thing record it because I can hit record right here play and you just hold this for a minute and then let it fade out You know, stop that. Then I have a sample of that. Then I can pull that into um, audio layer. Is that audio layer? Yeah. Or any of the other sampler apps. I can just play a file and stretch it across the keyboard. And I can just get, just create my own instruments from found sounds and being processed. And so that's, that's the ultimate goal for this, for this app, I think, is just experimental sounds. And so if you don't have it and you want to just be able to, plug in a bunch of AUV3 effects and just switch them around and do what you, just doing some sound design and just, oh, what does it sound like if it, this way or that way? It'd be like a, having a giant pedal board and just be able to uh, rearrange the effects, how the audio process is, you know, in real time and get, you know, instant feedback to create like the ultimate way. And then if you have a certain setup, you can experiment it with it on this, and then if your live situation is better suited for audio bus or AUM, then you can take the information from here, save the presets, and then just follow the routing options inside of AUM or audio bus to get that. But if it's you know if you're more suited to use those apps for live use. All right, thanks for watching, guys. Hopefully this was helpful and informative, and I explained kind of, you know, how 8Matrix works and how I've been using it as far as the audio routing goes, and it's just super quick and easy to get some things going on. If you have any other questions about 8Matrix, let me know in the comments below, and I will definitely try to dive more and more inside of here, maybe do some on, you know, using the AB send channels to send to the different other matrix one two or three and you know just get into a little more a little more detail you know just in little chunks i feel like this app is, has so much that it would be really hard to 
I mean, I could do one, but it would be like two or three hours long going going through. So I feel like it'd be better suited different, you know, smaller chunks and, you know, things that y'all actually want to know about. So as always, all the links are in the description and make sure you cl click the subscribe button. Have a new subscribe button I will put somewhere. It kind of animates and hopefully, hopefully the on-screen cues that... I've added in here is a lot better and makes where I'm pointing a lot better with this new setup with doing screen recording. Um, so, and if you like this new setup, let me know in the comments and I will continue to, to do this and improve it this way or if I need to go back to filming the screen with my G7 so that you can see my fingers, you know, either way, you know, it's pretty easy setup either way for me. So, all right, take care guys.